the next presentation is actually mine, so <laughs> I already I already told you, told you boy, yeah, what I can say again. Well, my name is Greg Gantrowski, and I'm from uh, I represent the Polish Packaging Research Institute. And uh, this presentation that I will have right now is a little bit different than uh, what we had before. Uh, I will be talking to you about one of our uh, <coughs> main outputs of Echo Paper Group, namely Work Package 5. Uh, this concerns sustainability assessment and more precisely life cycle assessment of uh, paper products. And we did life cycle assessment of paper products and life cycle uh, of paper packaging products and life cycle assessment of uh, paper graphic products. And um, uh, I will focus my presentation on um, paper packaging products and I will also have a short introduction uh, about life cycle assessment because I'm not sure if all of you are uh, aware of what kind of tool and what kind of framework it is. Uh, and then uh, Daniela Bissini from, from Minopac, uh, from our lead uh, partner's office, will have a presentation about the life cycle assessment of uh, paper graphic products. And he will also tell you something more about sustainability calculator, which uh, Gratian already mentioned in his first presentation. So. Mm, what is what is else here? What is life cycle assessment? Uh, I was I was trying very hard to explain it in the easiest possible way, and I and I thought of this: consider anything, consider any product, consider like for instance, I don't know this this sheet of paper. Uh, if we look at the full uh, like sort of a detailed biography or family tree of this product, uh, we will see the components that. Uh, we needed to, to, to make this sheet of paper, so of course we needed trees. Uh, we needed to fell these trees. Uh, we needed to transport those trees to the paper mill, then to create the paper. Then this paper had to be pack, packed some way. Then it had to be distributed to shops where uh, I bought it. And then I just printed it out with uh, some kind of information that I will probably uh, have it signed and probably put in the archive. And then it goes to uh, after like, for instance, five of, of ten years of being archived, this document will probably go to some kind of a waste. Uh, it will be a waste, but preferably it will be recycled, of course. And basically, if we look at any product from, from this perspective, when we look at this detailed biography of this product, from where the components of a product come from, uh, what, what is happening throughout the life of a product, and what happens uh, in, in, the, in the end of it, uh, when, when it's becoming a waste, effectively, this is a product life cycle. And if we want to assess this product life cycle uh, from a point of view of, uh, we can assess it from a point of view of uh, any type of sustainability. So we can assess it from a point of view of environment, economy, and uh, even uh, social issues. However, uh, most commonly uh, we use that and we also use that in our product from a point of view of environment. So if we want to look at it from a point of view of environment, we look at this full biography of our product. We consider all of the processes, all of the components, all of the uh, steps that are needed to be taken uh, in order to produce our product. And we look at what are we taking from the environment in order to do this product and what we are leaving behind in form, for instance, of emissions. So what we are taking from the environment in terms of this piece of paper, we're taking three. Uh, we're taking also some electricity, but we are leaving behind some emissions, like for instance heat and probably some gases uh, that were generated during the uh, paper production. We look at everything and we uh, mm, look at everything in as, as much detail as possible, and then we, all, we, we add all of those inputs and outputs together, and then we have this something called life cycle inventory, and, uh, by looking at this, we actually see what kind of environmental impact our product has throughout its life cycle. So uh, LCA stands for life cycle assessment. <coughs> it is um, most popular, and what is more, it's also standardized uh, sustainability and environment uh, assessment method. And we can use it to assess anything. Uh, I showed, I shown you like a simple uh, example of a piece of paper, but we can, we can assess anything. We can assess cars, we can assess computers, we can even assess uh, like full value chains whole companies, even whole economies. 
uh, if we have the data, of course, and also social cultural implications. So we can in, we can even assess something like uh, uh, nightclub and how how loud the music is in a, in a, in a nightclub. So basically, uh, LCA is uh, limitless. Whatever we want to assess, and we have the data to assess it, uh, we can use this methodology. And its main goal is to assess the aspects of uh, environmental impact, impact in the whole life cycle of the selected subject matter. Um, what's very important and interesting about LCA is that uh, we can not only uh, look at uh, one product, we can compare two products with each other and see which product is behaving better, which product has got uh, uh, what kind of environmental impacts uh, have got in comparison to some to some other, and this is exactly what we did in our project, and I will go to it uh, in uh, uh, in a few minutes. Um, so, uh, how does the methodology look like? We have like four main steps of making a life cycle assessment. We have something called the goal and scope definition, where we actually uh, define what is the subject matter of our study. Uh, then we are collecting all this data about this, what we've taken from the environment and what we are leaving behind. And we have to calculate this data in a very great detail. We have to go down to uh, component, uh, to chemical components uh, very often. Because then we use something called impact assessment method. And impact assessment methods are methods which tell us uh, which substances and which chemicals used uh, throughout the life cycle of, uh, of, of, of a product uh, can be linked to which uh, environmental category. And I will show you that in a bigger detail later. And then, of course, we need to interpret the details uh, and uh, all the applications of our study. <coughs> so, in short, uh, in the case of packaging, we can see that we have like this sort of a process tree that from resources we have to produce production, uh, we have to produce materials, then we have to produce packaging, uh, the, the actual packaging, then we have the packing phases, then we have product distribution, and then we have use phases, and then afterwards we have like either recovery or maybe landfilling or some, some, some other end of life. And throughout all this life cycle we have like um, uh, different uh, environmental uh, issues, like natural resource utilization, environmental damage, uh, energy utilization, gas emissions, uh, liquid waste, solid waste, etc., etc. depending on what method we choose uh, to uh, assess our uh, life cycle of our product, we have a different categories here. So, uh, in Echo Paper Loop, uh, what we have done is, uh, w what we are doing mostly, is we are looking at paper recycling. So we are looking at the end of life phase of paper products. Uh, LCA allows us to compare uh, eco design environmental imp impacts in recycling. Uh, it doesn't really allow us to do to do so straight from from, from the method, but we actually were working very hard to uh, accommodate the uh, LCA uh, methodology to do that. And today we would like to show you the results of uh, what we did. Uh, however, first of all, uh, just some assumptions for better clarification. Uh, we uh, made our comparisons and we made our life cycle uh, assessment in two modes. So we have results in two different types of, uh, two different sets uh, of uh, assumptions. So first of all is a full life cycle of a product and then the second one is just a focus on the end of life processes. Uh, what am I talking about? This is like a simple, uh, a simple example of a process tree of uh, some generic packaging and we can see this dashed line shows us the um, uh, system boundary, so what we are uh, taking account into uh, our, uh, our study. And when we have a full life cycle of a product, we take into account everything. But in order to show, uh, to show better what is the uh, actual environmental impact of uh, recycling, we will also do this. So we will also look just at the end of life, we will also just show you uh, how uh, recycling can be different, how uh, we have like examples of recycling versus non-recycling, and I think Daniela will talk to you about it. And in here we will have an um, example of showing you the different levels of recycling for, uh, for a product. So in Echo Paper Loop we made a total of four uh, life cycle assessments, two for packaging and two for graphic products. And we made like a two general packaging, uh, graphic, um, packaging and graphic products uh, LCAs. So first one is a comparison of Flexo and Offset Newsprint, and Daniela will show you that. And the second one is comparison of pure paperback and laminated paperback. And this is something that I will show you. We also have two 
more technical and more expert LCAs, uh, so to say, but uh, because uh, first of all, we, are, we still need to be sure that we are being as objective as possible and uh, that the results are correct. We are still not that, uh, we don't really want to uh, go into too much uh, details on this presentation, so we decided that we will show you the uh, example of how uh, LCA from a point of view of paper recycling can be looked at at those, uh, using those two general uh, packaging and graphic uh, product um, uh, examples. So, um, impact assessment method. So, as I told you, uh, when we are doing this inventory of all the inputs and outputs from from uh, uh, from uh, mother nature that's taken into account in the life cycle of of our uh, of our product uh, these are these all can be interpreted into uh, different uh, impact categories like for instance global warming acidification carcinogens etc and we can then further uh, this is called the midpoint method and further we can then um, interpret them into damage categories, which are human health, ecosystem quality, and resources. These are much easier to um, interpret and to, to explain, especially to like a general stakeholders, <coughs> but they offer like a higher un uncertainty. And this is called the midpoint. And what we wanted to do in, uh, in, our, uh, in our project, because we do uh, both expert and both uh, those uh, more general LCAs, we wanted to use a method that will allow us to have both midpoint and, and at, uh, endpoint results. And we use the one called recipe. And uh, so basically this is the impact assessment method that we, that we are using. And those uh, impact assessment categories that will be relevant for our products uh, will be taken from, uh, from this method. And some of the, uh, this method offers I think 12 or 13 uh, impact categories. But I've listed here just like three most important ones from our perspective and the one that we'll be using in our explanations. So that, that's going to be agricultural and uh, urban land occupation. Uh, and that's the amount of either agricultural land or urban land occupied for a certain time uh, in the unit of square meters uh, uh, multiplied by years. Then uh, another very important um, environmental aspect is the climate change, which is the characterization factor of climate change uh, of gl global warming potential. And then we'll have a fossil fuels and mineral depletion, which is also, of course, very, um, uh, very relevant from a point of view of, especially com uh, comparing, uh, comparisons of paper to for, to, for instance, plastics, or in our case, laminated paper. Uh, and for the end point, so those like more easy to understand units, uh, we have the uh, uh, unit called human health, uh, and that's uh, exp uh, expressed in the DALIS, which is disability adjusted life years, and that's like a very common uh, unit that's being used by uh, World Bank and the World Health Organization. And the unit is in years. Then we have ecosystems, which is expressed in the loss of species over a certain area during a certain time. And then we have a resources, which is like the surplus cost of uh, how much cost we need to, uh, uh, we need to have to, uh, to take uh, resources that we lost, that we used for, for uh, our product in order to be um, sustainable. Um, so back to specifically to the assumptions and uh, to uh, the results of uh, our case study. Uh, so what we did is we assessed the uh, life cycle of uh, shopping bags and um, we used them, um, we've taken a pure paper bag and paper bag plus lamination. And uh, we made up um, uh, different end of life scenarios to uh, demonstrate and to show uh, what can happen during the uh, end of life with, uh, uh, with paper packaging in this instance with uh, laminated paper bags. And in order to show you that life cycle assessment allows us to make this kind of scenarios and based on that scenarios draw some interesting conclusions. So the end of life scenarios for poor, uh, pure paper bag we uh, assumed that we are going to have a recycling in a standard recycling plant and uh, we assumed the potential uh, theoretical uh, very high recycling level of uh, 100%. Uh, for laminated bag uh, we have we drawn as three scenarios. So first scenario is we, uh, we said okay so let's have this bag recycled in a standard recycling plant, just as the pure paper buckets, and let's see uh, what happens with those assumptions. 
Uh, then we assumed uh, scenario B, uh, so uh, we said that uh, this laminated packaging bag, uh, paper bag should probably be recycled in a more specialized plant for treatment of composite and laminated materials and paper grades. And we've seen what happens if we use this kind of plants, even although, of course, we've taken into account that those plants are uh, less common and you need to have extra transport costs to actually transport uh, this kind of a waste to this kind of um, um, uh, recycling plant or paper mill. And then for scenario C, we've taken uh, the most uh, negative scenario that we could, which is like disposal without recycling. So we have just disposal according to municipal solid waste uh, disposal, which is uh, a combination of landfilling and uh, incineration. Um, so we used uh, CIMA Pro uh, 803, that's like a standard software for, uh, for life cycle assessment. As said previously, we used the recipe uh, endpoint method. And most of the data that we have uh, are coming either from uh, uh, from the industry, or, uh, from the Eco, Eco Invent uh, database, uh, the, the third version of, of this database, which is which is very accurate and uh, it is also considered as like a standard one for uh, life cycle assessment. So some more assumptions: uh, paper grade uh, that was considered for both pure paper bags and laminated bags is like a mixture, it's a 50% uh, craft bleached and 50% recycled fibers bag. And the functional unit of a calculation was like one kilogram of ready to use bags. So just like a, some number of bags which weigh one kilogram, just for the clarity sake and just for the results to be uh, uh, more comprehensible. Mm. Lamination, we've taken into account 20% of uh, weight of polypropylene of, uh, in, in this bag, and this is based on the information that, uh, that we got from laminated bags producers. They said that this is like a maximum level of plastic fraction normally used in high quality bags available on the market, and this is like a type of bags that we considered. Um, Total, total mass, total weight of the back and all other packaging elements like adhesives, applications, handles, finishings, etc. Uh, in our example are supposed to be the same for both uh, pure uh, paper back and laminated back so that we uh, don't confuse you even, uh, in, even further with results. As for the end of life assumptions for pure paper back, as I told you before, we um, assumed the recycling yield of 100%. That means we have no cost reject generated in recycling. It doesn't mean that 100% of this paper can be used back uh, uh, for recycling because for this we introduced something called quality factor, but I will talk to you about it later. Um, then for the laminated paper back of scenario one, um, the uh, end of life scenario states that we are putting this back in a standard recycling plant. And uh, we found out from, from literature and from, from uh, some of our sources that we can have a probably something like 50% recycling rate uh, when, we do, uh, when we do that. Because not all cellulose fibers can be recovered and an important part of them is rejected together with, uh, with uh, plastic. Um, for scenario B, because we are using specialized plant and we can have much higher level of, of recycling, we assume that we have 75% uh, uh, of paper fraction that can be recovered. But we also assume that we, that we have an average transport distance of 500 kilometers uh, to the place where we can actually uh, mm, uh, recycle this kind of uh, composite bag. Uh, that was calculated as some sort of a um, European average because of course in some countries uh, those uh, mills are probably closer. But for instance in Poland I know that we have like very little, probably like one or two such, such mills in whole country. Um, and for scenario C, uh, the end of life option is final disposal. Uh, for instance, if local regulation doesn't allow recycling of this kind of products in the paper fraction or uh, based on any, any, any other reasons. As for the cars pulp, uh, pulping rigid waste, which is like this amount that is not being recycled, so uh, in the instance of the third scenario that was 50%, in the second scenario that was uh, 25%, in the first scenario it's 100%, uh, we use uh, just data for municipal solid waste, so we just assumed 60% landfill and 40% incineration. This is because we have no specific data on EU level for the disposal of recycling waste, so we just assumed this. But, of course, this is just our assumption. Um, 
some more assumptions before I go to results, but the results will be soon, so <laughs> uh, stick to it. Uh, we use a closed loop approach. So uh, the approach that we have is that recycled fibers obtained are supposed to replace raw material used for bags manufacturing. So our recycle, uh, our waste can be recycled to make new bags. So basically, our bags can be theoretically made from uh, old bags in this way. But in order to do that, we had to introduce something called the quality factor, because quality of recycled fibers is normally lower than those of uh, virgin cell, uh, cellulose fibers. So we set up this quality factor at 75 based on uh, SCA's recommendations, and that was for product environmental footprint under discussion in Europe. Uh, this is debatable. We can, we can discuss what kind of percentage we should uh, use here, but we just use this here just to show you that uh, 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 how the results looks like when we assume that uh, 75 of original quality and properties can be obtained using recycled fibers. In this instance, of course. Probably in some other application, it's less. Probably in some other application, it's lower. But in uh, this case, we assumed this uh, to be 75, and we discussed it really at length. Uh, so for the results, uh, in here we have um, something called the uh, process tree. So uh, uh, we can actually show you what processes uh, are being used to make these bugs and what processes happen in the end of life. And you can see the red arrows show you like all the uh, environmental loads, but the green arrow show you the benefits. And you can see the green arrow uh, showing recycling, because we have... Um, mm, Will I see the, oh. uh, we can see, this one doesn't work, I'm afraid, so you will not see, so I will just show you like that. <laughs> oh. uh, I, would, I would just show you like that. So anyway, in here we have um, uh, recycling, uh, recycling phase, and we can see that by recycling, of our pure paperback with a quality factor of 75, we can avoid that much of new sulfate pulp that had to be used to produce a new bag. So basically, this is where we actually can see the recycling using life cycle, uh, life cycle assessment methodology. And uh, this is just like a different representation of the same, so uh, you can actually see it, but because uh, the process tree is cut off, you don't actually see the arrow coming back, but you can see the recycling. So whenever, green is good. <laughs> Uh, but when we look at scenario A, you can see that we also have this green arrow because we have some recycling, but this recycling is much smaller. So uh, um, it is understandable and we can, all, of course, see it here that we still have a benefit, but this benefit is much lower than uh, we had it in a pure paper bag. Uh, and when we look at it from this perspective, we can already see that we have some kind of uh, incineration and landfilling processes here, which uh, do have their own uh, environmental loads. Uh, for the third case, uh, for the second case, sorry, where we have uh, recycling of this back in a specialized plant, um, the arrow is a little bit higher. Uh, so it is so somewhere in between the pure paper back and the laminated uh, paper back of scenario A, because we have 75% of, of uh, recycling. Uh, and this is how it looks like from, from this perspective. And then for scenario C, we have no recycling, so no green arrow. So that means that uh, uh, this is going to be the worst, uh, uh, the worst case scenario shows no recycling whatsoever. Uh, and you can, you can see it here as well. And then we can show you the actual results. So in here, uh, we have different uh, uh, environmental uh, impacts. Like, human, uh, like climate change from a perspective of uh, uh, human health, climate change from a perspective of ecosystems, agricultural land occupation, and fossil fuel depletion. These are the ones that are, uh, as before, uh, most relevant. Uh, and we can see it. We have like, uh, in, in blue, we have the pure, pure paper bag. Then we have the laminated paper bag with scenario A, with 50% of recycling uh, recycled in a standard plant. Then we have, in gray, uh, laminated paper bag with scenario B with 75% uh, recycling in a specialized plant. And then we have laminated paper bag without any recycling whatsoever. In this graph, the higher the value, the bigger the environmental impact, and uh, that means that the uh, worst off from the point of view of environment our product is. 
So we can see in here clearly that uh, if we don't recycle, we have the highest uh, environmental load for uh, all of those uh, categories. And it can be shown even more uh, when we look at end endpoint method, which just combines those uh, environmental impacts together. And in here we are just seeing human health ecosystems and resources. Interestingly, resources, so you can see that pure paperback is like very low and then we have like more or less the same impact for uh, all of those three categories. This is because of lamination. Lamination, in lamination we use plastics and plastics use resources uh, and those resources are ranked as being uh, more um, important from a point of view of uh, uh, environmental impact uh, than the resources that are used for uh, making paper and not really relevant for uh, regardless of recycling uh, scenario. So that's why they stay the same. Uh, and this is, again, another representation, like a single score representation. So we can just show you in a single score how those bugs behave when we look at the full life cycle uh, of, of the product. And then I told you in the beginning that we are using two modes of uh, looking at results. So the second mode is, um, second mode is, uh, looking only at the end of life. And in here, the situation is a little bit different because when we just look at the end of life, we can actually see the benefits. So we can see how big the green arrows are in total. And the green arrows are, of course, uh, negative in this graph. It means that they have negative environmental load, which means that they offer uh, environmental benefit. So if something in the LCA is on the, ne uh, is on the negative, it means it's very good. And we can see that the most important impact category was agricultural land occupation. And we can see that our pre paperback because of potential 100% recycling uh, rate, uh, has, got the best, uh, has got the best result. And the same, the same in here. Those results in here are mostly connected to other end-of-life options, which, are, which is incineration and landfilling. So you can see that this is the highest for uh, scenario C, which offers no recycling whatsoever. And this is the single score result. So, um, what I said, and some conclusions about that. The main impact for the manufacturing of all bags is due to the pa uh, pulp and paper production from uh, virgin cellulose fibers. This, uh, when we look at the full results and we look at in details which processes are mainly responsible for which results, we see that the main impact of manufacturing is from pulp and paper production which tells us automatically that if we recycle it, we can avoid much of this impact. Uh, polypropylene accounts roughly to 25% of total weighted environmental cost for laminated paper bag. Uh, most important environmental advantage is the possibility of recycling of the paper uh, in the same production loop. So we can actually close this arrow and show uh, those positive results in here. Because if we were to recycle uh, our uh, paper into some other product, you wouldn't be able to show it this way, according to, me to, to the methodology, even though we still have recycling. So uh, if we really want to claim sustainability in the best way possible using uh, best available tools to do that, uh, it's best to ensure uh, the public that we can actually go to the same, uh, to the same loop. Um, so, uh, in the case of paperback scenario C, some more conclusions. The lack of recycling makes it necessary to supply all virgin fibers for the production and to dispose the product at its end of life. And thus, because uh, the biggest environmental impact is from uh, paper production, it means that we have no benefit again. Um, so the case of pure paperback with complete recycling in the same uh, paper cycle has the best behavior in uh, absolutely all impact categories. Uh, the scenario A is a little bit worse than pure paperback, um, but scenario B is, uh, mm, from the point of view of uh, laminated paperback, scenario B is uh, most definitely uh, the best ones. So it shows us this message that uh, if we want to, uh, it's much better to recycle those difficult uh, laminates, for instance, to recycle them in a specialist plant than to uh, move them into, uh, into standardized plant. The downside of it is that we don't have that many of them. Scenario C is, of course, the worst one. And very importantly, the quality factor that we assumed was 75%. It might be different. We don't know. That was just our first assumption. So that was just a simple example of uh, life cycle assessment of packaging. That's how uh, our uh, 
office for performing this life cycle assessment looks. So it's just two laptops, some books, and of course a phone. Um, uh, but anyway, the uh, example is pretty, uh, uh, is pretty easy. Uh, just to show you that you can, you can assess recycling in a nice and clear way using life cycle assessment. Uh, but we also did something more complex, and this is something that Daniela will uh, tell you about now. Uh, in the example of uh, um, graphic paper. So thank you. Yeah. I made it. <laughs> uh, any questions for me? Yes, please. Uh, it's funny being a host and being a presenter at the same time. <laughs> Here you are. Uh, you show us a lot of figures. Yeah. And you show us also the instruments you uh, uh, have used for the calculation of the figures. Yeah. Um, what do you think are the errors, errors. of your yeah, I mean, uh, the problem with life cycle assessment is that life cycle assessment is all based on assumptions and on the quality of data that you have. And basically, uh, the LCA standard tells you that you have to make sure that your data is as precise as possible, and if not, that it is being reported that it's not being precise. So basically, what we try to do is, uh, of course, we try to get the best, da best available data out there, but if we couldn't, we wrote why, and we wrote very clearly our assumptions. And uh, based on that, you can, of course, say that, oh, okay, uh, I don't agree with this because this data was, was lacking. And in some cases, you might be right, but this is how this method works like. Yeah, sure, I I'm, I'm, I'm totally agree with you, uh -huh. but just because you're an expert in this, what is your feeling? Do we talk about plus minus 10%, plus minus 50%? Uh, yeah, we did, we, did a sens uh, we did a sensitivity analysis, because this is something which you can do. Uh, so we did a sensitivity analysis uh, for uh, those examples of bugs, and we have, I think, like, uh, uh, if, if you want, I have a laptop with, uh, with, uh, with the other software, so I can tell you what the exact standard deviation is. But I think it was relevant only for 5% uh, of data. So it's not that much. So basically, when you run sensitivity analysis using Monte Carlo method, you basically uh, mm, run your results using different values, uh, which, uh, which have their like minimum and maximum, or they have uh, like some kind of uh, normal distribution or log normal distribution. And basically, what it means is that 5%, only 5% of the time, uh, we had a situation when uh, pure paper bag was, had the same value as laminated paper bag in scenario B. Only in scenario B. All the other scenarios were always worse. Mm. However, you can all, always question the data that we have, because it might be that the data that we have and the uncertainties that we put in yeah. Uh, might not be correct. This is like a very huge uh, limitation of LCA method, but no one thought of anything better up to, up to this date. So we have to use this method with all uh, its uh, limitations. Yeah, no, no doubt. I think yeah. it's a perfect method what we have uh, today. Uh, it's just uh, for me to have a better feeling when I see, sometimes you see carbon footprints with two or three digits. Yeah. I think this makes no, totally no sense yeah. for me, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> if you have so many assumptions. So just for, from an expert, what do you think? We are in the 10% range mm -hmm. and the 20 We are in the 5% range. I, yeah. I, can tell you, I can tell you exactly, because I know exactly what, what, what is the result, but I will have to say. We didn't report it here because we thought that it's not really that relevant that uh, Monte Carlo analysis shown only 5% of uh, discrepancies, and only with one other scenario, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, any other questions? Okay, if no, then I invite Daniela. <laughs> <laughs>